Hello everyone, welcome to IT Frontier. In this video, let's talk about what is Node-RED and why it is used in IoT. So let's talk about the introduction of Node-RED. So in agenda, why Node-RED is used? We are going to introduce Node-RED and what are the different concepts of Node-RED and what is the UI that you will be looking at and the limitations of Node-RED, then we'll finally conclude it. So what is the problem that we are going to solve with Node-RED? So generally, IoT doesn't have one size fits all solution. So we need to use different, different devices and their APIs and online services in an interesting ways to solve the problem. And for example, if you want to access a serial port and also complete any kind of authorization flow, for example, with Twitter, then it is not very easy pr process unless you are a dedicated programmer. To make these things very easier for all kinds of developers, Node.js will be very much useful. And what are the other problems that it is going to solve? For example, consider a situation where you need to be alerted via an SMS or an email, and so based on a trigger event, then how can you achieve this? So in general way, to achieve that, you need to program it. So using different programming languages. Wouldn't it be easy to create a simple drag and drop components to create a flow for such kind of situation that we have discussed here? Yes, Node-RED solves that kind of thing. So Node-RED, we can use different components and wire together and then create a flow. So this is easy to wire together and create an internet of things. So it is actually browser-based drag and drop UI for creating flows of events. As we discussed, if you there is any triggered event, then you want to perform some business use case. So based on that, so Node-RED would be very useful and easy to start. And it is a lightweight runtime and it is built on Node.js. That's why the name comes from Node.js. That's why the name is as Node. And it is ideal for edge of network environments or it can run in cloud as well. And it is easy to expand because there are so many nodes that are available in built in as well as there are third party applications that have created different nodes to be used. And then this Node-RED is based on Node.js as we have discussed. And because of that, it has taken full advantage of its event driven and non-blocking IO mode. So it was previously developed by uh, IBM in 2013 to take advantage of event-driven and non-blocking IO model. So what is the power of Node-RED? So Node-RED power comes from the combination of two factors. The first one is it is based on flow-based programming model. The flow-based programming model is useful for typical IoT applications where we want to uh, do some action based on certain events. So at that time, flow-based programming model would be very useful. And second combination of the power comes from is the built-in nodes. There are various nodes. Uh, we'll be talking about what are these dif different nodes in uh, next session. So first, what are the different built-in nodes that are available? So by which we can take advantage and create a task. So for example, if you want to talk to uh, get the tweets from the Twitter, then it will be having built-in nodes as well. Whenever you want to create a uh, custom function, then also you can create a node. If you want to even create an MQTT broker, a client, then also they have built-in nodes or we can import like, those libraries as well. So let's talk about the concepts of Node-RED. So Node-RED will be having predefined code blocks that we have discussed. So it will be having input node, the processing node and output nodes. So it's just like a black box. So we'll be having in between the processor node where the function can be written or there would be some other already existing function that has been defined. So we'll provide the input. So based on events, it will be triggered and the output will be generated. For, for example, you want to send a tweet or send an SMS or event or turn on the bulb, etc. All those things then can be mentioned in output nodes. And what is a flow? Flow will be having whenever we have this connected nodes to perform a task, then that is called a flow. And we have a rich library of nodes and flows as we discussed. And we can also extend these to create new capabilities. So we can create our own custom uh, library or function 
to add more functionality. And we'll be having this uh, web-based environment where we can have the JavaScript-based uh, codes written onto it if there is no built-in code. Here you can see the Node-RED user interface. So this is the browser-based drag and drop solution. So you can see uh, on the left side, you will be having all the nodes. As we discussed, it will be having input, output, and processing nodes. So input will be having inject, catch, status. There are so many things that we'll be using. And in the middle, you'll be having different flows. And the flow definition, uh, so the wiring and the flow, exactly what we are going to create will be in this middle. And here, the information about this flow. So each node information and how to use it, all those things will be mentioned here. And if you are going to run it, you will be able to see the output in the debug block as well. And whenever you want to run it, you can use this deploy uh, button here. And there are different menu options on this hamburger menu. And as we are talking about node red flow, so let's talk about a simple flow here. So whenever you want to do some uh, black box processing, so you see here, right? So we have on the left input uh, node and in middle we have function F we can see, and this is for processing. And on the right side, you will be having some output which returns something. So whenever we start, start the flow and it will be connected to do some magic and that will be processing. And once that is processed, we'll be given to the, the return output. And we'll be seeing one example. We have 42 as an input. And the in between, we'll be having one component which takes input as 42 and use some processing power over there and calculates whatever the output that will be coming onto the answer. This is how simple the node rate would be. And how can we run and where can we run this node rate? So node rate can be run on various platforms. It can run on your local computer or you can run on edge systems like Raspberry Pi, Bigglebone, etc. And also you can run on the cloud virtual machines as well. And what are the limitations of Node-RED? The limitations of Node-RED are, first, it will not be very much useful when it were, we have complex multifunction IoT applications. Because Node-RED is very good at rapid prototyping and rapid application development. And the subflows can be used within main flow to handle the complexity. But whenever the uh, application has uh, crossed more size, then it would be difficult uh, for the complex program to visually program it. So at that time, Node-RED cannot be used as a first hand or the first uh, preference. And the flow-based programming has its own weaknesses. For example, the loops, whenever we want to handle the loops, it would be very difficult to handle in this flow-based and flow-based programming of Node-RED and specific use cases. So this Node-RED is not targeted or optimized for specific needs. For example, uh, the data analytics or user interface development, you will not be able to do much over here. So that, that's why flow-based programming has a limitation for this again. Let's conclude what is Node-RED and how can it be used. So Node-RED writes together a different building blocks using a visual tool to rapidly create simple flows. So we can have the real world tasks created very simply with wiring these as a flow. And we'll be having Node-RED as a rapid application development tool. So whenever you have such task, you don't uh, want to learn any new programming language and simply make that work, then Node-RED can be very good choice for that. And Node-RED has been evolved, not just for IoT, but there are so many web applications and social media applications that can be created and Node-RED can be used in such cases. And Node-RED has limitations for complex applications and user interface uh, needed applications. Now you might have understood what is Node-RED and how Node-RED can be used for solving IoT problems. In the next video, we'll be talking about how to install Node-RED and also we'll be talking about more concepts of Node-RED, how, how we can create first flow Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.